what is up guys it's Zura here and today I finally have a deck profile for a deck from the new set I mean the only one, one of the only decks I can play I'm, I'm like kind of working on Zelda so don't expect anything for Pale Moon but uh, uh, that aside today's deck profile will be uh, Maelstrom so uh, we got JP new set got what like Maelstrom Reverse that was basically it honestly uh, this set got what? You got like a bunch of rares that are like okay, but like aren't better than the set you already have. You got the Maelstrom, and then you got the Maelstrom Reverse, and then you got the uh, Blue Storm Tokyo Attackers. But I like barely opened this set, or basically didn't open it at all. I opened a few packs, but like I didn't play any copies of that card. But the Tokyo Attacker is honestly like replaceable by a bunch of stuff. So I wouldn't even go out and get those. But that aside, uh, here's the deck list. Oh, there you go. This deck list, uh, this list was uh, inspired by one of the dude, one of the guys who brought. Like off horse of the championships. I still don't think this like is good, like too too good by any means, but this list is definitely like pretty fun to play with I'd say. Definitely a, a pretty fun deck. Especially if you like already like Maelstrom playing like Maelstrom before. But yeah, uh looks very different from how I would usually build this deck, but I think with what this deck tries to do is pretty pretty cool. So without further ado, I'll start explaining the cards. Uh first off the starter with the um uh, Marios or it's called Mario I just call him Mario. Uh Rear guard, Forerunner, and, uh, uh, when the boosted battle hits with its, when the, bat, when, when he, the battle where he boosted hits the Vanguard, and it's the third battle or more of that turn, you check top five cards of your deck, you add a Maelstrom from among that to your hand, and then you add a, you add the same copy of that card back to your deck, so, it's a grade three searcher that doesn't actually rip a trigger out of your deck, which is pretty cool. Uh, I just think it's cool. This, like, I don't actually know if this, like, if the, the way to play this the deck is like this is the right. But I do think there is still merit to playing a build with Eric in it instead of, as the starter. But I think the starter is really cool. Well, that's honestly all I. I honestly want to play just because I thought the, I thought the starter was cool and the interactions that you have with stuff like Algos is pretty cool. But yeah. Uh, I, I guess I'll, I guess I'll show a list with Eric. With like a more like standard list of how I play that deck after. But we'll go over this first. So. uh the Mario is pretty cool because it's uh, because it doesn't rip a trigger every deck and it stays on the board. Meaning, as long as you hit third ba the third battle every turn and you're hitting with the Vanguard, which is not that hard because Maelstrom. If you have Lambert, Maelstrom's like fat, like really fat. So uh, if your chances are you're probably gonna get off your Lambert, you're probably gonna search and then you just keep searching for you for uh, extra cards to play down at worst, or you search for Glory to End Games or a. Uh, Reverse Maelstrom, which is basically better regular Maelstrom, but it uh, doesn't give cross based to glory, so that's why yeah, we put less of that, but that, I'll get to that when I get to that. So yeah, uh, this card lets you, uh, it can help you dig for the Maelstrom ride, the base Maelstrom ride, it can help you dig for your other glories to end games after that, so I think that's pretty cool. This card is just cool. Cool is definitely the best way to describe it. So, yeah, uh, moving on to the great ones, uh, PGs, uh, PGs or PGs, I choose to play the new PGs, but I honestly think with pings and stuff, you could play the old PGs if you want. I like the new PG just because uh, I don't. Sometimes you want the extra counter blast. I also think this art looks cooler, so uh, that's that's kind of the reason why I play it. But this art definitely looks cooler to me than the old PG. But yeah. If you have four PGs, you don't play less than any deck. PGs or PGs, you play them for a reason. You need them to live. Uh, what were the four up first? The four up is the self thing. So on play, you self damage if you do not have fire damage. Uh, and then at the turn, you put one, you put one card back into your deck. It's out. You put a damage back to your deck prioritizing face downs. Pings or pings. Maelstrom has always played pings. This is honestly a lot less than I used to play before. Before I, I straight up played eight pings before, but you gotta make space for other stuff now, right? But yeah, ping, pings are really nice. Pings are really good with Maelstrom. Uh, yeah, one more can I say? Pings are pings are cool. Pings are pings are Maelstrom's best friend. And then next off, uh, the wheel assault. So his skill is uh, an Annabelle that he boosted. Uh, CB one to swap the position of two rears. So. This card is a fourth attack enabler. It can also enable you and your points at five to do like really wonky attack patterns that let you get like an extra check to face. Uh, just one off the top of my head I can think of, you can go like, uh, you can go like solo attacker, solo attacker uh, together as one lane. Or actually no, uh, uh, Dia or Basil with something behind it that can swap an attack. Uh, you have a solo attacker behind the vanguard and like this and something else that, that it's boosting, so you end up going uh, Dia. If you're assuming, assuming your opponent's at five and has like, has like double intercept, you go Dia. Uh, check for a PG. You swap. You go 
the thing you swap with to kill the intercept. This boosts something kills an intercept. And then you use his skill to swap the thing behind your vanguard and something in the front row, have that hit first and then have your vanguard hit after that. So I, this, this card just enables really cool can enable really cool interactions like that. Uh, I will say this card is kind of awkward with Maelstrom Reverse just because it requires you to lock a card and that kind of takes away the ability to do cool attacks like that but even if you don't do like cool stuff like that you can do this card still enables fourth attacks which is I think is pretty valuable for this deck. So yeah, especially since we're playing less deals in this build, I think wheel definitely has a higher value for this list. I only play, I only own three wheels, but I don't think I play four because I really do value playing two of this card, the Pengi. Uh, I don't even know it's uh, Light Siren Penguin Soldier or something like that. I just call him the Peng. The, the, he's the Pengi. He's the Penguin. So his skill is a unplay so blast two draw card. Uh, this card needs pieces to do things uh, like a lot of pieces. You basically need a full board every single turn. This card gets you an extra card. It's always nice. You play two because I always want to see the one every game. So yeah. Uh, honestly, this green one line's pretty, pretty, pretty stock standard. There's not a whole lot of variation to it. Uh, green two line is uh, pretty interesting. I will say, even I didn't think this was very good until I tried it myself. But uh, I'll get to the cards. I get to the cards. Uh, four title assaults. Once per turn, uh, when he swings at the vanguard, you stand him again, and he gets five k power. So he's a fourth attack enabler. Although with how Maelstrom tries to attack, this card is like super, super awkward because Maelstrom needs to be the last attack on like Tetra Drive. So this card basically only works for the fourth attack your opponent has zero intercepts, has, doesn't have double intercepts up, which is common early game, very rare late game. So don't don't expect him to be doing much of anything late game, but the best part about him is that he's a 9K, he's 9K base. So he can, at least when you swap him with like a Basil or a Dio, he can swing solo into an intercept most of the time. So yeah, play four of it. Uh, and he is needed for your, uh, for your uh, super super cool turn 2 play. I'll explain that once I explain all the great 2s, but yeah. Play 4 of it because he is needed for your turn 2 play, so you play 4 because you need to see it early. Uh, 4 Algos, a card that I wasn't really high on before, but it's pretty cool for how this deck wants to play. So, uh, first skill is Vanguard Rear. And it's actually important that it's on Vanguard, that's available on Vanguard. But Vanguard Rear, when its attack hits, if it's the 4th battle of that turn, 4th or more battle of that turn, but usually it's going to be 4th battle, battle, draw a card. And then Vanguard Rear, if it's when he attacks, if it's the fourth, I think it's the one when he attacks a Vanguard, I think, he's gonna swing a Vanguard anyway, because if, if he's on Vanguard Circle, so, uh, if you if, if he's sw if he swinging for fourth attack, he's swinging a Vanguard anyway, so when he attacks, uh, you can CB1 and give him 5k, so this lets him scale and hit, lets him hit over defenses and stuff. Uh, act this skill matters too, but yeah, yeah, he's like a fourth attack enabler, he's, he's like the ro one of the rewards of fourth attack that isn't Maelstrom, so, he, in my eyes, is like a pseudo self ping because if I weren't, if I wasn't playing Algos, I'd play self pings in the slot, which would enable Maelstrom for the draw and retire. But this card gets the draw anyways, and he's 9k base. So yeah, uh, that's kind of how I look at it. And then the Valeria is the same thing as Algos, except it's a, it's a retire instead of a draw. Uh, the draw to me is a lot more valuable than the retires. That's why I play four Algos. Uh, this can be honestly whatever, but I'm like, if Algos is so good, I'll play a fifth Algos, right? It's Obviously not as good as Algos in my opinion, but Valeria is still okay. And then the last card is the Basil. Uh, so his skill is uh, when he attacks the Vanguard, if it's the first battle of that turn, when he attacks the Vanguard, he gets 3k, and then you swap it with the thing behind it, and then uh, other skill is uh, once per turn, counterblast one. Uh, if it's the first battle of that turn, he ignores intercept, intercepts, so he can actually hit the face. Oh yeah, the first skill card to hit Vanguard too. So. I, I'd assume most people have seen this by now. Uh, Basil and Dia, uh, you counterblast, if they have an intercept, you counterblast one. He swings that intercept, he swaps, and then you swing, swing, Vanguard, swing last. Like, he's your primary fourth attack enabler, especially for Maelstrom, because uh, this th this way it's not super awkward like Tidal Assault. Now, you play four, again, because it's the best way to do it with the Maelstrom, and it's also needed for your super cool turn two play, which I'll explain right now. Uh, I will say AK base hell sucks. I hate playing this card at four of, but. Since we can't play four Diaz, I have to bump something up to let me enable more fourth attacks. That isn't super awkward, so don't have a choice. It has to be Basil. You're definitely not playing the grade one. Yeah. Uh, the super, the super cool turn two play. Keep alluding to is uh, a, a just in, in the ideal world, you go first. You open Algos, Title, and Basil. I know it's asking for a lot, but it happens enough because you're playing four of everything. It happens enough that I think it warrants playing this. And a huge part of it is because the starter also pluses you a card. So how, how it works is you. Go first, so turn one, you ride, you pass, do whatever. Turn two, they hit you, you ride, pass, whatever, you know? No, 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 nothing special there. 
Uh, turn two, you ride the Algos. Has to be Algos. You call Basil, and then you call Title Assault. Uh, t uh, uh, with title behind the basil, and since you're going first, uh, and since you're going first, they literally cannot have intercepts. You will not have the counterbalance for the basil, so you go battle. You, you go basil hit. Cool. Uh, you do basil does the man. He stops at the title. Title swings twice, which will blank both times, guaranteed because uh, unless your opponent unless the opponent wrote a like Dudley Dan specifically, the title is not going to hit any hit because. Uh, after a damage shield, let's just say they wrote like a 7k, then we 12k. Uh, 12 is obviously bigger than 9, right? So, uh, title blanks twice, and then you have Algos hit. The best thing about this is the defensives literally do not matter here, because if they blank, obviously you don't have to pay cost for anything, right? So, uh, uh, Basil hits, title double blanks, and then Algos swings for 14. That's 14 is bigger than 12, or 13, throw an 8k. He hits, Algos gets the draw, and he and then Mario gets the search. So you get two cards. You play down two extra cards onto the board to get two cards back to your hand. So you don't technically lose any advantage there, which is why I think this play is really good. Uh, and if they on options that do get defensive, uh, you don't have to worry about it because Algos can always CB one for the five, extra five get power to make sure he hits. So I do think Algos and Valeria fixed the problems that I didn't like with Mario before. Is that uh, Mario was very susceptible of getting screwed over by like a single defensive on first damage, like. Uh, another play you do sometimes is just like ride whatever, call a title, title swing, swings, hits once and then whiffs the second time, and then you just have to Vanguard lane boosted by Mario hit to get the search. But sometimes the opponent's first defensive is a trigger, and then you flip a blank and you're like, oh, I guess I put a card out for no reason and I don't get my search now. Oh, that kind of really sucks. I'll go solve that problem. Yes, you need to commit an extra card, but I think it's worth it. And it's two da and it's two confirmed damage turn two, which is uh, cool. We can. Do an extra damage attempt to out tempo them, so yeah. That is, that, like, a, a, the grade 2 pieces are basically all pieces for that turn 2 play, and then and they either let you do things outside of limit break or it lets you enable the fourth attack, so like, these are all like combo pieces for that, but I think it's like pretty good. Yeah, that's a grade 2 line. I think I got, I think I went into uh, more than nothing. More than enough of an explanation for that. Onwards to the grade 3s, so. First thing is the base maelstrom, uh, so Limit Rig 4, uh, if it's the fourth battle or more of that turn, he gets 5k power and at, and, and, and at the end of the battle, draw a card and retire a card, and then other skills when attacking Vanguard plus 3k, the waterfall skill. So this card is like, honestly, the effect is cool, it's, it's cool, it's cool, it doesn't, doesn't help, doesn't actually help you end games or anything, it just, uh, you just play for resources, you get an extra card, which is cool, and then they lose a booster, which is also cool. In the mirror, you're almost always retiring the Dio or the Basil in the back, but, yeah, That's only in the mirror, but, yeah, this card, it's cool, it's cool. Like, like, like there's not a whole lot much to say, it starts cool. It, 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 but a lot of it is, you play it because it gives, enables cross Shard base on the Glory, which also enables him to do his ultimate break, at level break 4 instead of level break 5, which is very important. And then, uh, also gives, uh, Crossroad based the reverse maelstrom, which is good because now you're sitting on 13k base, 13k base that just retiring boosters every turn, which is cool, which is pretty, pretty, pretty actually okay. I think the biggest problem before playing maelstrom and playing for value of retiring boosters and stuff was that since maelstrom was in 11k by itself, like a, a regular grade three by itself would just hit hit the maelstrom, but now if you're on crossroad base with the uh, with the uh, reverse maelstrom, uh, they actually need to commit a booster for something to hit, unless they're playing like Palamedes or something. So yeah, uh, that the like, the Retire is kind of not that impactful while on base Maelstrom, but the va the, the Retire can be impactful while you're on a uh, Reverse Maelstrom, so yeah. That's so you play 4 of it. It's still, your, it's still the thing you want to ride first, it's just that it feels a lot worse when you whiff this and you have to ride something like Reverse first, because Reverse is literally just Maelstrom, but like has a lock on its cost, but also gets a crit for it, so yeah. Uh, still play 4 of it, you still want to see it first, but the card itself is honestly kind of whatever. Honestly speaking, but like, the waterfall skills really quick though because it lets you scale your scale your lanes. Well, next off, <coughs> I'll go over glory. Uh, everyone, everyone's favorite uh, giant ass glue gun, as I like to call him. He's he is a giant glue gun. But uh, Limit Break Five, uh, uh, when attacking Vanguard, Limit Break Five. So ultimate breaks DB two. He gets five k and a crit, and your opponent cannot sentinel unless they also randomly discard a grade three or higher from hand. So yeah, uh, this card is this card is honestly still the card that's winning you games because uh, Glory is still asking for grade three PG or die. If you get to shoot them multiple times, if they actually will just lose because 
actually having great 3 PG, like like every single turn can actually be relatively annoying sometimes. And then and as it gets crit, so crit's always cool too. So you can actually do this turn from four instead of five. So that's that's kind of why this card is good. But uh, something like uh, like the darker regular, I don't the darker regular one also has the glory, the glory skill without the crit is not good. So, yeah. And then cross base with base maelstrom, and then uh, if you're on cross right, his limit break five becomes limit break four. So that's that is the main reason why I like to play the base maelstrom in the deck. There are definitely lists I've seen running around that plays like four verse four glory, one base maelstrom, and four dias. <coughs> so you basically for forego the cross right completely. But I think the cross right actually is relatively important for this deck. That's why I choose to play the four base maelstrom. And then uh, the new maelstrom is the reverse maelstrom. Uh, so his skill is uh, limit four once per turn. You can pay cost to lock the card, lock any card on your board. So that's uh, cost. And then he gets uh, if it supports battle more, he gets five k and a crit. And at the end of the battle, draw and retire. So you lock one card to get the crit, basically compared to base maelstrom. That, that's that's the trade off. You lock a card to get the crit, and then. Uh, he also has the waterfall skill of when attacking Mega plus 3k, so he gets the scale, which is really good, and cross ride with base maelstrom. So the main reason I really like cross ride with this card, aside from the fact that 13k base plus retiring boosters is pretty cool, pretty good, is that since you have to lock a card, you don't really want to be locking your rear columns, like anything in the back. And you have you don't you don't actually lock anything in the front, but uh, locking stuff in the back, you ideally don't want to lock your rear rear back columns sometimes. So your main, your primary lock target is usually like the Vanguard booster, and with how adding all numbers work, uh, so 11k plus the 5k from his limit break, plus the 3k from attacking Vanguard plus the cross ride base equals to exactly 21. So as long as your opponent is on cross ride or MLB themselves, uh, you can freely lock the Vanguard booster, not have to screw around your like formation of your like your back rows and stuff like that, and still be guaranteed to hit the Vanguard. How like how base mushroom is usually with the booster. So that's why I like the cross base with this card a lot. And then finally the two Diaz. Uh, he is he is Basil, but at grade three, so better. <laughs> Basically. Like I I I love to play four of him, but I don't have space for it, because I want the extra maelstroms. Right now. So yeah, his skill is uh, uh when attacking Vanguard, if it's first battle of that turn, plus three K, and then swap the back row, and then C V one to let me ignore it if the first if it's the first battle of the turn. So yeah. This is the list that I've been playing with if I ever want to play off course. I think it's pretty cool. Uh that, that turn two play is really cool, and then Everything else, it, like the deck still flows relatively well together. You just, yes, you play less pings, but I think it's honestly fine. And then the I'll just briefly go over a list with Eric in it instead, where you don't play super high rolling stuff. Uh, and see, this list, uh, the grade one line is exactly the same. The grade two line, uh, the grade three line swaps out uh, so, uh, two glories for two more Ds and plays the D on heal instead. And then uh, you don't play the Algos or the Valeria or any Basils, and you just fill it in with. I fill, I choose to fill it in with uh, counter chargers and the 10k uh, 10k uh, Vanillas, just to have a more stable ride. So, uh, like if you, if you want to play a list that doesn't play the 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 Mario, this is like a more traditional quote unquote traditional list of the deck. But I think I think that turn two play with the Mario is pretty cool. So I just I usually play this list more. Yeah, this is these are my lists lists lists. Yeah, lists, because I actually showed two lists today. Uh, just tell me guys what you think about these lists in the comment. Uh, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Uh, I'll have some games, but the games will only be with this list, because I didn't really play the other list in that much, but yeah. Uh, like Again, like and subscribe, all the good stuff. So I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.